This free sample on steep turns is a small part of our two and a half hour video showing you how to perform all of the takeoffs, landings, and flight maneuvers for the private pilot practical test. We use HD in-flight video and animation to make everything easy to understand. You'll see that we don't use fillers that waste your time. Just what you need to know to fly the right way and pass your flight test with ease. For more information on all of our products, visit our website at flighttrainingapps.com. The first in-flight maneuver of the practical test is Area of Operation 5, Steep Turns. Steep turns are a performance maneuver requiring an advanced degree of piloting skill. They require higher than normal bank angles, sometimes necessary in the event of unforeseen circumstances, such as the need to avoid other aircraft, clouds, or terrain. The ability to perform steep turns safely and effectively is therefore an essential pilot skill. Whenever an airplane is banked while maintaining altitude, the load factor or weight of the airplane increases. The greater the bank angle, the greater the load factor or weight. This increase in load factor is due to centrifugal force, the same force that keeps water in a pail as you swing it overhead. In effect, the water weighs more and stays in the pail in the same way as an airplane will weigh more when banked. The amount that weight or load factor increases can be determined from the chart found in the FAA Pilot's Handbook of Aeronautical Knowledge. For the 45 degree angle of bank required in the private steep turn maneuver, load factor increases by 40% as shown by the load factor of 1.4 in the left margin. In the steep turn maneuver, because the airplane weighs 40% more due to load factor, we must increase lift by using back pressure on the yoke to increase the angle of attack. As lift is increased, drag also increases, so some additional power must be added in order to maintain a constant airspeed. The steep turn is a 360 degree turn in either direction with a bank angle of 45 degrees while maintaining a constant altitude and airspeed. The PTS also tells us that the examiner may request a subsequent turn in the opposite direction, so it's a good idea to practice steep turns by doing two 360 degree turns in opposite directions. First, we will perform a clearing turn of 360 degrees at a medium bank so we can effectively scan for other traffic in the area and also select a safe altitude of at least 1,500 feet above terrain, with suitable emergency landing areas below. Although there is no specific advice from the FAA regarding how to conduct clearing turns, the 90 degree and 180 degree clearing turn maneuvers have predominated over time. I much prefer the 360 degree clearing turn because it provides the time to carefully look for traffic from all directions and would strongly recommend it for your check ride. It also gives you two minutes to slow down, think about, and get set up for the maneuver. Always helpful on a check ride when you're under pressure. The entry airspeed as required by the PTS should be at or below maneuvering speed, which varies directly with weight. Maneuvering speed is faster when heavier and slower when lighter. The POH for our Cessna 172 shows a maneuvering speed of 97 knots for the maximum weight of 2300 pounds. And since our weight today is 2000 pounds, maneuvering speed will be 90 knots. Here's how to do this for any weight. Just calculate your current weight as a percentage of the airplane's maximum weight, which in today's example, is 87 percent. Then take the square root of this number which is 0.93 so our weight adjusted maneuvering speed is 93 percent of 97 knots which equals 90 knots.
To achieve the 90 knot maneuvering speed, power is reduced in our Cessna 172 to 2100 RPM and a prominent reference point on the horizon selected. Set the heading bug if you have one, or if not, make note of your heading because this heading will be where the turn must be completed within 10 degrees. Trim the airplane before beginning the maneuver so it is stable with respect to altitude and airspeed. Roll into a coordinated bank of 45 degrees, remembering that significant right rudder will be required in a right turn and little to none in a left turn. After passing the 30 degree point, add approximately 200 RPM of power to maintain airspeed as back pressure is added to maintain altitude. Trim to relieve control pressure. Because of the overbanking tendency, some opposite aileron pressure will be necessary to prevent the bank from increasing past 45 degrees. In steep turns to the right, because of something called parallax error, the airplane's nose will appear to fall, causing a tendency for the pilot to incorrectly compensate by increasing back pressure. In fact, this is an illusion caused by being in the left seat. In a steep turn to the left, the nose will appear to rise, and the temptation to compensate by reducing back pressure will be an instinctive but likewise incorrect reaction. To eliminate these illusions, maintain your focus on the horizon and keep the airplane's nose only in your peripheral vision so you can perceive any real gain or loss of altitude correctly and not be influenced by the appearance of the nose. Keeping your focus on the horizon will also help you to approximate the required 45 degree bank angle. Make sure that most of your visual scan is maintained outside the airplane and not inside at the instruments. Deviations in altitude and bank angle will be perceived much sooner by keeping your focus outside and therefore corrections can be made earlier. It is a useful practice technique to have your instructor cover the altimeter and attitude indicator so you will be forced to look outside and develop these perceptual skills. You'll be surprised how much easier this maneuver is to do this way. Of course, some attention must be paid to the airspeed, altimeter, and attitude indicator so precise deviations can be interpreted and corrected. But by keeping most of your focus outside, you'll have smaller deviations to correct. Airspeed is an important consideration in performing steep turns. However, as long as the correct power settings were established and maintained during the maneuver, airspeed deviations can only be caused by altitude deviations. Losing altitude results in gaining airspeed and vice versa, so keeping a constant altitude prevents airspeed deviations. As the 360 degree reference appears, Begin the rollout to level flight approximately 20 degrees before your original heading by reducing bank and applying opposite rudder simultaneously so the rollout is coordinated and not either slipping or skidding. Remember to apply forward pressure on the yoke and re-trim to avoid gaining altitude and reduce power back to the original power setting so airspeed and altitude remain stable. Some of the common errors in performing steep turns are excessive pitch change during entry or recovery, failure to stop the turn on a precise heading, inadequate power management, inadequate airspeed control, poor coordination, gaining altitude in right turns or losing altitude in left turns, failure to maintain constant bank angles, attempting to perform the maneuver by instrument reference rather than visual reference. Some of the most important PTS standards for the steep turn are to establish the manufacturer's recommended airspeed or if one is not stated, a safe airspeed not to exceed VA. 
roll into a coordinated 360 degree turn, maintaining a 45 degree bank. Perform the task in the opposite direction if specified by the examiner. Divide attention between airplane control and orientation and maintain the entry altitude plus or minus 100 feet, airspeed plus or minus 10 knots, bank plus or minus 5 degrees, and roll out on the entry heading plus or minus 10 degrees.